Hey, what's up? It's HJ. Welcome back to my channel. Um, if you don't know about my ministry, The Confident Girl, this is where I do Bible studies, um, inductive studies, and teach Bible literacy. Like I teach girls online how to study the Bible, to get the most out of it, to have their life change in ways, their relationship with the Lord that they never had before. So click below or click right here, somewhere up in here. <laughs> uh, follow The Confident Girl on Instagram. Let's get into this third John study. We're going to be talking about missionaries. This is the last week of six weeks through second and third John. Let's jump into it. All right, beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testify to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, Diotrephes, we're going to go with Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. And not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil is not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. We also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. I had much to write to you, but I'd rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends each by name. All right, so let's jump into this. Whenever you read scripture, you want to ask the kind of basic contextual questions. Who, what, why, when, where, things like that, right? So who? Who is this beloved? Who are these men? Who is Diotrephes? Who is Demetrius? Why are these things being spoken about them? Let's jump into the missionaries first. So beloved, he's speaking. And last week we talked about who he's talking to and why he's writing it. This is Gaius or Gaius. I don't know how to say his name. Um, he, this is a personal letter to him, but he's getting instruction on how to handle the missionaries and handle the church. It is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers. Well, who are these brothers? Well, if, if you want to you want to look through the whole scripture so you can try to fit the pieces together. These brothers we see here send them on their journey for they have gone out for the sake of the name. What does it mean to go on a journey to go out to the Gentiles for the sake of the name? These people are missionaries spreading the good news of Christ. So, these brothers are missionaries. He's saying, it is a faithful thing, faithful thing, and to ha put effort forth to missionaries. It says, you will do well to send them, so send them out on their journey, do it in a manner worthy of God. Faithfully, in a manner worthy of God. This is the how of sending missionaries. But wait a second. What does it mean to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God? This, now this is a tip when studying your Bible. Write this down, tuck it away. Remember this, okay? This is for every time you study the Bible. I could probably say 10, 20, 30 good things that are true godly things, but that doesn't mean it's what the scripture is talking about. So we don't want to add to the text. We don't want to make it say what it doesn't say. Um, what it doesn't say is that a manner worthy is, you know, Give them rain boots if it's rainy where they're going or make sure that they have comfortable seats on their camels or their flights or whatever it may be. These may be good things, right? Make sure to give them a bunch of extra Bibles so they can pass out to other people who don't have Bibles. Good things, but not what the scripture is talking about. So um, tip, don't add however good the thing may be to scripture. Seems easy enough, right? You probably hear that a lot, but you would be surprised how many times without even realizing it, we're adding to the meaning of scripture, what it was not intended to mean. So what does it mean then? Well, if you look at verses seven and eight, it's actually going to tell this. This is connected to the how right here. How, what is the worthy, 
uh, manner. So it says, for they've gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. What does that mean? Therefore, we have to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers. So actually, if we go over to 1 Corinthians 9, Paul the Apostle talked about this before, about going to a people and um, being supported by those people. So let me just read you a few uh, scriptures from 1 Corinthians 9. Does a soldier ever serve in the army at his own expense? Does anyone plant a vineyard and not eat the grapes? Does anyone take care of a flock and not drink the milk from the sheep? Going down a few verses. Don't you realize that those who work at the temple get their food from the temple? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who spread the good news should earn their living from the good news. So it is a biblical God honoring thing. Like in any other, the point Paul's trying to make is in any other line of work, you get paid for it. You get your wages for what you're doing. So why would it be any different if I'm spending my life and my resources and my time and my heart and my soul um, to go out and spread the good news? Shouldn't I earn my living from the good news? Paul does end up saying, if you read on in verse 15, I haven't used any of these rights and I haven't written this in order to use them now. What he's saying is, uh, he decided to be a tent maker, and we hear about Paul the Apostle, the tent maker. He could have took money for spreading the good news, for being a missionary, for planting churches. He decided not to, but he still had the right to do it. And so using that over here, they accepted nothing. This accepting is actually talking about money from the Gentiles. These are the people who they're reaching, people they're going to. So we have these missionary brothers that are going out to the Gentiles to reach them, to live among them, to put churches in their communities and raise up men and women of God. And he's saying, look, they're, they're choosing not to accept anything monetarily from them. Therefore, the word therefore is always referring back to an idea. Keep that in mind too. Tip number two. Um, we ought to support people like these. Again, this is a financial support. So, going back to the question, these questions right here, what does it mean to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God? He's saying give them money, support them financially, um, help them not have to worry about their everyday expenses because they need to be worried about the gospel. So, let me just exhort and encourage you with two things. One, it is a faithful thing to put forth effort and money into missionaries. How are you, how is your church supporting missionaries? Are they sending them? Do they have missionaries come from other churches that are you know, being sent somewhere else, but they support them financially? Do you take a special offering? Do you have a missionaries fund in, in your church's budget? Putting money forth to men and women who are trained and dedicated in sharing the gospel to unreached people. Maybe they're reached people, but um, it has a low percentage of believing Christians in, in that area. That is such a faithful, good thing that the Lord wants us to do. So if you yourself cannot be a missionary, which if you're young, I encourage you to consider being a missionary. It takes a lot of training if you want to do it well, but I, I encourage you to consider it. I totally would, um, but I can't. It's all right. Um, Send money, help, help financially with them. And, and here's a really good reason why you should do it. You ready? That we may be fellow workers for the truth. Maybe you can't go, but whenever you support missionaries and you make it able for them to do what they're doing, you're actually partaking in the work that they're doing. That the Lord is seeing you as being partnered with these men and women of God. And you're not the missionary yourself, but like the Lord sees your heart. And he's like, these churches are being planted. These people are being saved. You know, the, the good news is getting out and spread. And you're a part of that. You're helping. You're doing that too. Um, so I want to encourage you that there is actual blessing and reward that comes with partnering with missionaries. All right, so moving on. I have written something to the church. So so we let me change colors. We're we're getting to this weird dude, this rude dude. Diotrephes. I'm probably butchering his name. 
he likes to, he's about to make a list, all right, just a straight up list of like evil things this guy is doing. One, put himself first. Two, not acknowledging the authority of pastors and elders. He is three, talking wicked slander nonsense against these pastors and elders. And he says, as if that isn't enough, four, he refuses to welcome, who's the brothers? The missionaries, right? He refuses to welcome the missionaries. And then five, to make it even worse, they're just digging a hole. He's stopping other people who want to support these missionaries and he's putting them out of the church. How evil must a person be to want to stop men and women of God from sharing the gospel with people and stop others from from partaking and helping them financially with that. He's talking slander against pastors. He's not acknowledging their authority. He's being selfish. As we come to see in verse 11, he's he's pretty much saying this is straight evil. So we got um we got a little teeter-totter over here, right? We got evil. Actually, the teeter-totter should really probably be shaped like this because evil's, it's always fallen flat. So we got evil, right? So this dude, evil. But we have another side of the spectrum. He says, beloved, do not imitate evil. So don't be like this fool, but imitate good. So this is the other side. You're either evil or you're good in the Lord. Whoever does good is from God. So good equals from God. But whoever does evil has not seen God. What does it mean if you haven't seen God? Is it talking about physically with their eyes? Well, it, it can't, right? Because Jesus has already been crucified, been resurrected, raised up to sit, be seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is not physically there. So it can't mean that. Just contextually, we work that out. Um, but it means like with, with spiritual eyes. If a person is acting and hating and in so much going against pastors, going against missionaries, going against having the gospel be put forth into this world, that person is not, oop, that person is not a Christian and that person is not seeing God. That's a really bold statement he's making, but he's making it and he's like, don't be like them. So Demetrius has received a good testimony. So he's the other side of the scale. This dude... Demetrius is good. Diotrephes bad. Has received a good testimony from everyone. So how, who has he re- received a good testimony from? Everyone. And from the truth itself. And also um, from John who's writing. Now, it's really great when men and women of God look at you or look at someone and say, you are good in the Lord. You're a godly woman. You're a godly man. You stand for for godliness. But the ultimate authority for what is good and godly is scripture. And he's saying not only do people say that they're good, but the truth itself, the word of God, the truth of God itself matches up and lines up um, with this person. And so I just want to encourage you. Sometimes we think we're doing good. We think our character is good. We think we're serving good. All of these things. But really just line yourself up with the word of God. And and what does scripture say that we should be? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not boastful. Fruits of the spirit. Self-controlled. Are you a self-controlled person? That's a really hard one. Patient. Kind. Loving. Let scripture be um, really the mirror for which we're looking in, into and, and seeing whether or not we're matching up or adding up. But the beautiful thing is in Christ with the Holy Spirit, we can grow in the areas where we're lacking and we want to be someone who the people in our church will look at us and say, wow, they are good. Um, So I love you guys. See if your church is supporting missionaries. Um, Support them yourself. Make sure that they're good people to support because you don't want to partner with wickedness, right? We want to partner with goodness. People who are doing good work for the Lord, um, you will be blessed by that. And then also just make sure that you're looking into a mirror of scripture and seeing, am I good or am I evil? Um, Obviously you're good if you're in the Lord, but like how Christ-like are you? 
I love you. This is the end of the road. Six weeks in second and third John. We're going to be starting a new book really soon. So follow at the confident girl at the confident girl on Instagram um, and see what's next. Love you guys.